Good evening, Grinnellians. My name is Chris Meyer, and I am a member of the class of 1970. I have had the honor of serving this year as the president of Grinnell's Alumni Council. On behalf of President Harris, the Grinnell College Board of Trustees and Alumni Council, and the Office of Development and Alumni Relations, I want to welcome you to Virtual Reunion 2021. In a year where so many have experienced loss, isolation, and worry, our ability to get together is more important than ever. While I would obviously prefer to be with you in person in Herrick Chapel, I support the college's decision for our collective health and safety. This year, 176 individual class volunteers collaborated with the alumni office to plan this virtual reunion. I want to thank them for their time, their creativity and flexibility in rethinking this program and recreating what is always a meaningful experience for Grinnellians. When I joined Alumni Council several years ago, I started attending reunion each year. There was something about the ability to interact with other Grinnellians that reconfirmed what I already knew about the importance of this community. For me, and probably for many of you, Grinnell was our first exposure to people from other places, our first glimpse into other cultures, other nationalities, other religions, or ethnicities. It was the first time we found ourselves in a classroom with a whole host of people who were smarter than we could have imagined. Many of us have experienced a kind of imposter syndrome, wondering, do I belong or where do I fit? What we found, ultimately, is that we do. This place is where we came together to stretch ourselves and to become better, to find purpose and passion that helped us to launch into our adult lives. Grinnell College has long been a leader in making thoughtful, measured, and protective decisions for its students. I saw this as a student in 1970 during the upheaval that followed the Cambodian incursion and the Kent State shootings. It's also been visible this past year, as Grinnell has responded to the challenges and heartbreak of the pandemic. I have been proud to be connected to an institution that has consistently put the well-being of its students, faculty, staff, and community ahead of all else. And the evidence of our resiliency and efforts is astounding. To deliver our annual State of the College Address, and to tell you more about how our college has risen to the challenges we have faced and prepared for those ahead, I am honored to introduce Grinnell's 14th college president, Ann Harris. Good evening, Grinnellians. Thank you so much for joining us for the kickoff of Virtual Reunion 2021. Now, normally you'd be in Herrick Chapel with me, I'd get to watch those wonderful moments that happen when you connect with someone you haven't seen in too long. But of course, this year, my State of the College address will be a little more distanced than it will be in the future. Still, I want to tell you how Grinnell is doing, how our students are doing, and how our alumni have helped us thrive over the past year and a half. But before we launch into the resilience of Grinnell, I want to take a moment and acknowledge your resilience. There's a fatigue we all experience now when someone says one of those ever-present phrases like the new normal or refers to how things are these days or lest we forget that word unprecedented. Every single one of you and everyone we know has endured something during the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic, the racial reckoning of the summer of 2020, deeply intertwined trajectories of human experience have brought so many realizations and actions to the fore. These layers have given us new perspectives, new grief, and new burdens that all of us are learning to carry and in addressing racism in America that many have been carrying for generations. And in the midst of all this, while we continue to build a shared understanding and a deep acknowledgement of what is going on in our world, I am infinitely grateful we can still be in community. In the time that isolation and challenge have been constant, so many of our partnerships, our labor, our methods of functioning have been engaged in ways that were previously unimaginable. 
We were challenged by distance, by time zones, by free access or economic constraints. But here we are, surviving, rethinking, reimagining, and most importantly, doing. I appreciate the struggle we've all faced and also the ways in which we've changed our definitions of community. In many ways, the Grinnell community has become more global than it was before. Pre-pandemic, all of our students were here. Our campus was home to students from all 50 states, 50 nations, speaking 62 different languages. What happened when we were forced to limit access to this place is that Grinnell was still home to all of these incredible people, but they were spread across oceans and 23 of the world's 24 time zones instead of across our 120 acre campus. What was a visible presence became digital images in virtual meetings and we were forced to articulate ourselves differently. In preparing for strategic planning through essays, virtual town halls, video and phone calls, and even a weekly radio show, I was able to reach and connect with Grinnellians everywhere. We were still able to share conversations on issues such as governance, research, structural racism, work-life balance, and stewardship. And while it appears that we had lost so much in the ability to gather, what we found was that the desire to be together never stopped. And so we found ways to be together differently. Our virtual alumni programming was extensive. From virtual study abroad experiences to virtual wine and cheese nights, our first ever Grinnell Spelling Bee, and opportunities for alumni to attend faculty lectures and discussions. We had so many participants at these events, demonstrating that our bonds remained strong, even over virtual gatherings. And we didn't slow down academically either. Our students inspired me with their resiliency to learn and to keep learning. Our staff worked incredibly hard to support our academic initiatives, and our faculty moved mountains over the past year and a half to sustain academic excellence and continuity. Faculty taught some sections twice, knowing that different time zones and class schedules could severely impact their students' sleep schedule. Just two examples. Sociology lecturer Jennifer Snook gave her students glass vials with soil from Central Campus so they could keep a piece of Grinnell with them at home. Art professor Matthew Kluber delivered studio packets to his students, bringing the classroom into their homes. The teachers so many of you had and loved provided endless support and guidance to every student, and for that we are infinitely grateful. I also want to acknowledge many of you to whom I've had a less traditional introduction. We haven't shaken hands, but we have listened to one another. I have heard you. I know you to be intentional community builders, and I know you to be participants who will engage in difficult conversations. I know you want to help Grinnell get better, and I encourage you to do so. While we have aided our students in their absence through COVID-19 grants or funds for technology support, Know that your guidance and your words are just as important in helping them live through the loss of the past two years. You can help them go as Grinnellians can go. Just as I've seen you participate in Exco, Alumni College, and a variety of creative virtual events organized by volunteers in tandem with the Alumni Relations Team, supporting our students with your advice and your gifts to the college are the pieces that help them truly reach their potential. And one of these first steps in supporting our students is to get them back on campus. We've created strong pandemic protocols to support students and residents so that we can bring them back safely. And earlier this year, we announced the No Loan Initiative, the end of loans packaged in need-based assistance. Because we believe replacing student loans in aid packages with scholarships will help keep students here safely. The collaboration and coalitions we are building at Grinnell will reach into all the places Grinnell graduates can go. I've never seen students on so many committees, in so many coalitions, and taking self-governance so seriously. It further assures me that those who can build community are the ones who can make change. Our Grinnell student body remains strong, as do our numbers of prospective students. We're so proud of the fact that students are still progressing towards graduation at the same rate as before. Interest of new students coming to Grinnell hasn't faltered either. 
In fact, we had over 10,000 applications this year, a record for Grinnell, and the fifth year we've had an increase in the number of applications. And these are certainly not the only indicators of Grinnell's strength. At the end of this month, we'll complete the largest comprehensive fundraising campaign in the college's history. Together, our alumni, students, parents, friends, faculty, and staff have invested over $186 million in support of our students and access to a Grinnell education. This achievement doesn't just demonstrate that you show up for Grinnell. It shows us how you show up for Grinnell, and it proves that, yes, together we are greater. As we begin the next academic year, you can expect to see several developments. First is the continued discussion of what I am calling the common good, a series of essays which help to frame my vision for the strategic principles of the college. These strategic planning principles, community, educational excellence, diversity, equity, and inclusion, health and well-being, and financial sustainability, are those that I believe will strengthen the mission of Grinnell College and prepare us for the next chapter of the college's history. These principles will help us make informed and collective decisions about priorities and initiatives, and will determine how Grinnell College moves forward within the complex landscape of higher education. Second is our deliberate and carefully planned return to in-person teaching and learning. We want to make sure all of our students can live in Grinnell and will continue to adhere to the health and safety precautions which must be taken during this pandemic not losing sight of the concomitant struggles related to mental health, financial burdens, and the work of racial justice. And finally, I look forward to meeting you where you are. Starting in January 2022, I will be traveling extensively, hosting events to meet our alumni and to engage you in conversations about the future of Grinnell. I eagerly anticipate the chance to meet more of you. As you enjoy the rest of the virtual reunion celebration, I want to thank you for caring for each other, for caring for our community, and for helping us to persevere. Time and time again, we have epitomized the strength we exhibit when we work collectively toward common goals. To our students, faculty, staff, and alumni, thank you for allowing us to remain part of your lives, and thank you for demonstrating time and time again that together we are greater. I can answer that like 900 ways. Are you going first or am I going first? I can go first. Thinking of something to say. <laughs> you didn't tell me it was going to be this hard. Being a Grinnellian is being part of a, a community that's been very supportive for us for almost half a century. Through this, have formed many, many friendships with students other faculty and the community, and it's been a wonderful place to live. The students at Grinnell are just so multi-talented, and we've learned so much in our 41 years here at Grinnell from the students while they're here at, as students, but also we've kept connections with so many of the alums, and, and we learn continuously from them as well. It's fulfilling, it's rewarding, and it's, um, just the best thing that's probably ever happened to me. One of my pleasures in the past year, despite the COVID pandemic, has been able to continue um, supervising the student workers in the college garden, but we have not been able to have other kinds of gatherings at the garden with other students, and certainly one of the things I'm looking forward to very much in the coming year is to have other groups of students come for organized events or just come to spend a little time in the garden either working or just sitting on the benches and watching the vegetables grow. Uh, what do I miss? I miss, uh, I miss the flow of things. I miss not seeing students and faculty moving around on campus, filling the campus. Uh, it's, sh it's shocking to see it empty, and I really am glad to see students and faculty beginning to come back on that, on that campus and fill it up again. What I'm most looking forward to in coming back to campus is the day-to-day, face-to-face interactions 
uh, with both colleagues and with students. Uh, I've, I've missed the daily meetings and I've missed seeing people on a, on a day to day basis. I, I terribly miss our students. I mean, that interaction with my students is what keeps me young and excited about learning myself, and uh, we're so excited about that coming back eventually. Grinnellians are everywhere, and there's no better proof of this than the virtual reunion audience tuning in from around the world. You put down roots at Grinnell, so don't lose sight of them. Take time to reconnect or connect for the first time with other Grinnellians on campus or off, virtually or in person when that's possible. Never forget how great and how global your Grinnell community can be. We at Grinnell, during the pandemic, have shown our ability to adjust, but we never give up and we're going to emerge from this stronger than we were before. As alumni, stick together, get to know each other even more, and make sure that when you come by Grinnell on Interstate 80, you stop in for a ham sandwich, or you find one of your friends who are also here and get in touch with them. We are so proud of you for what you have done since Grinnell, uh, making a difference to so many people out there and making us at Grinnell proud of you. One, I think it's really important that you enter into those conversations that we are now calling difficult and know that you're ready to do that. And second, do it from that good place, that place of knowing, knowledge, um, heart, and a sense of responsibility that as a Grinnellian, you have part of the answer. And, uh, and if you do that, you, that would make my teaching meaningful to me, too, knowing that you did that. Well, you know how lucky you are to have encountered and experienced Grinnell. But I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for enriching my life and being such good friends to me and making me feel welcome in Grinnell. I think the hardest thing about working for Grinnell College is that every four years, uh, you lost the people that you really had grown to know and like. And I would encourage you all to come back and visit because we really miss you. This award ceremony and recognition of recipients has become my favorite part of Reunion Weekend. I find the stories to be awe-inspiring the incredible things Grinnell graduates have done, and the paths they have taken. While my own path has been much more conventional and much less inspiring, I'm proud to be a part of this community of changemakers. Alumni awards recognize those who embody the college's mission of lifetime learning and service. Recipients are nominated by their classmates and peers as individuals who have distinguished themselves by their service to their careers, to their community, and or to the college. Grinnell continues to attract and educate some of the most wonderful people, people who are able to do spectacular things in the larger world. After reviewing the stories of this year's honorees and award recipients, I'm confident that you will agree that Grinnell College must be doing something right. Virtually or not, these honorees and their stories are incredibly powerful. It is now my honor to introduce you to the Alumni Award recipients for 2020 and 2021. This year, we felt the best way for you to learn about our honorees would be to hear from many of them directly. Enjoy. Part of a long line of Grinnellians, Richard Booth was a key force in expanding Grinnell College's facilities during his two decades on the Board of Trustees. Booth served as a jet pilot in the Air Force before embarking on an impressive business career at Lennox Industries. He became a trustee in 1982, serving with dedication, dependability, and excellence, while also participating in many class and college activities. For the past 36 years, Joan Furman Jones has been doing what she enjoys the most, painting. Focusing mainly on watercolors and pastels, 
Joan has won more than 75 awards and prizes, and her art has been featured in more than 100 jury shows and competitions. While she majored in art at Grinnell, Joan put aside painting early in her career for public service roles, serving as a program supervisor for the YWCA and working in public relations for the American Red Cross. Barbara Hunt Moore has rejoiced with the class of 1965 in their successes, sympathized with them during losses, and kept the class linked together through detailed, friendly class letters. She has written more than 70 class letters since becoming a class agent in 2001. While she has been kept busy leading the International City County Management Association's Publishing and Information Resources Department, Barbara has also found time to give back to her class and alma mater by serving on the Alumni Council, participating in Grinnell and Washington, D.C. regional events, and helping plan reunion activities. Hello, Grinnellians. When I came to Grinnell in 1961 as a freshman, and even when I graduated in 1965, I never imagined that Grinnell would remain a part of my life more than 50 years later, much less that I would be receiving an alumni award. In my role as class agent through many of those 50 years, I've come to appreciate the long-term connections that the Grinnell education experience provides. I've also come to appreciate the excellence of the Grinnell education. As I share news of my classmates and their lives and careers, I can see that Grinnell has succeeded in its stated mission, and I'm reading now, to prepare to produce graduates who are prepared in life and work to use their knowledge and abilities to serve the common good. My classmates' accomplishments continually amaze me, and I take pleasure in sharing them through letters and other communications. Grinnell also gave me an opportunity to expand my connections beyond my own class to alumni of many classes and with students. That was during my service on the Alumni Council. I want to thank the Council and the others who had a hand in making this award happen. I particularly want to acknowledge my deceased classmate, Sally Wolf Robinson, who was our first class agent and laid the groundwork for a connected and engaged class. So thanks to all my classmates who stay connected with me with each other and with the college, making my job as class agent not only meaningful, but a lot of fun. Thank you. Delabian Rice Thurston's dedication, commitment, and passion for higher learning is commendable and inspiring. For 17 years, she served as the executive director of Parents United DC Public Schools, a parent organization advocating for adequate funds for Washington, D.C. schools. While she became the object of much criticism from embarrassed politicians and school administrators, there were several noble victories along the way. She later taught social studies in D.C. schools in an effort to solve issues by working on the inside. At age 64, she started working on her Ph.D. at Howard University. When I entered Grinnell in 1962, I got to explore my talents and open my mind. <laughs> I got to be a freshman and sophomore cheerleader. I auditioned for and sang in the choir. And I used my public speaking talents to win a collegiate interpretive oratory contest for the Grinnell team. I performed in the musical Anything Goes and got to explore dance through orchestras. I developed leadership skills and ran for house president as a senior. This was also my first brush with advocacy when I realized that Black women students were always given single rooms. I raised my concerns to a faculty member on a governance committee of, of the school. And I learned that when he raised it with the Dean of Women students, there was a white student whose parents objected when she had a non-white roommate as a freshman. So, they solved it by not giving black students roommates. By my senior year, when I was Haynes Hall president, roommate assignments were non-racial and interracial. I came to Grinnell assuming I was pre-med, but I realized early on, I didn't even like the smell of the biology lab. What I did like was politics. 
I majored in political science with history and economics as minors. Lectures from Joseph Wall and Alan Jones really let you understand that the world was not the way it was in the textbooks. There's a lot to learn. In 1985, when our son started public school, I was introduced to Parents United for Full Funding by Rod Boggs, the head of the Washington Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. They were looking for a black person to direct the group. And I was shocked to find out that one of the individuals who was advocating for my doing it was Diane Dunn Boggs, a Grinnellian that I had danced with in orchestras. I was quite surprised. Thus began my amazing journey of public school advocacy, helping parents stand up for their child's school and for the school system. From 1985 to 2000, I fought for resources to improve the quality of education for black and brown students in a school system and national system that privileges white students, but that doesn't even recognize that much of what we do in education is not working even for white kids. I decided to go to Howard University and work on a doctorate to examine this issue and perhaps be able to change education nationally. It's wonderful to have Grinnell College acknowledge the kind of advocacy that I've done. Thank you. I really appreciate the award. Dorothy Dose Metzler planned, led, and implemented change since she was a student at Grinnell. An educator and a naturalist, the outdoors often was her classroom. For example, she started Hudson Watch, a summer program for science teachers to do a field investigation of blue crabs in the Hudson River. Later, as a South Carolina master naturalist, she transformed a greenway into an outdoor classroom for school children, designed exhibits, and developed curriculum for use in the outdoors. Dottie passed away in November 2020, but her husband, Dick Metzler, class of 65, was able to present her award to her last summer on their 50th wedding anniversary. The only Grinnellian to win a Nobel Prize, Tom Cech's exemplary career has included breakthrough research, decades of teaching, and 16 years serving as a Grinnell College trustee. Thomas shared the 1989 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Sidney Altman for their independent discovery of the catalytic properties of RNA. He also served for a decade as president of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and has taught at the University of Colorado at Boulder since 1978. His research work has appeared in more than 350 publications. Greetings Grinnellians, and thank you for this award. It's caused me to reflect on my time uh, at Grinnell and the three greatest things that I took away were, first of all, Carol Martinson, uh, then Carol Martinson Czech. We would have celebrated our 50th anniversary last year but because of the pandemic, it's gonna be our 52nd wedding anniversary uh, celebration this coming year. And then there were the science courses. Uh, when I got to Grinnell, 
I took an exam to pass out of freshman chemistry, but I didn't pass that exam. So I became a chemistry major because I was determined to learn that material. And that turned out to be great preparation for contributing to biology at the level of molecules and reactions. And then there were the non-science courses, freshman humanities with John Crossett, constitutional history with Joe Wall. These were not only great preparation for life, but they honed my critical thinking and writing skills, which are so important for a scientist. Now, it's been thrilling for me to have a career where I could make discoveries about the chemistry of life. But the other great thing about being a professor has been working with young people and helping them achieve their potential. I've had over 100 trainees since I've been at the University of Colorado Boulder, and many have gone on to become professors at institutions including Stanford, Yale, Duke, University of Chicago, London, Lausanne, Kyoto, Shanghai, and Sydney. One of the highlights for me last year was that one of my trainees, Jennifer Doudna, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her discovery of CRISPR genome editing, which she shared with her collaborator, Emmanuel Charpentier. Now, Jennifer graduated from Pomona College, so you can see that the liberal arts colleges have really done well and they have done good. Thank you. During her 32-year career, Meryl Penson infused her spirit and technological savvy into libraries throughout the state of Georgia. As Executive Director of the Library Service for the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, she supervised 29 libraries and led a system-wide implementation of next-generation library platforms. During her student days at Grinnell, Meryl played an important role in the foundation of concerned Black students and the Connie M. Kimbo Black Cultural Center, including serving as the first BCC House Monitor. Grinnell provided leadership opportunities, critical thinking skill development, a desire for continuous learning and looking below the surface, an opportunity to study abroad in Costa Rica and to extend my view of the Americas and the world and many lasting friendships. I have an appreciation for the experiences I had at Grinnell and hope that my small contributions can help others have these kinds of experiences too. Gathering with Grinnellians provides another opportunity to continue learning as Grinnellians are engaged in so many different pursuits and are never lacking for ideas and discussion. When I got the call saying I had been selected for this honor, I was stunned given all the amazing graduates of Grinnell College. Having worked in higher education and with so much of my work in collaborative environments, I know what distinguishes colleges isn't just the alumni who win literary and scientific prizes. Uh, but yes, I do brag on Tom and Carol Check and Gary Giddens. It is the collective sum of alumni who work day to day to make our world better in our respective professions and communities. I'm honored to represent the many Grinnellians who do just that. There's a proverb that says, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. It had helped. At every stage of my life, there are so many people who have contributed to my success. Most critical were my parents who are now deceased. I grew up in Alabama. We had used textbooks and one test tube for my chemistry class. My parents learned about a brand new program, A Better Chance, which sent black children from the South to independent schools in the North so they would have a better educational experience. So, in 1964, I went to the Windsor Mountain School in Lenox, Massachusetts for two years. As I look back, I am amazed at their courage and bravery to send a 15-year-old Black girl far away from home to pursue an education. Education and social responsibility were key values in our home. At Windsor, I was recruited by Ron Goodnow, class of 63, and enrolled in Grinnell sight unseen, having received financial support. My parents never visited Grinnell, but at one reunion, I took photos of the entire campus and gave them a tour. 
There were so many wonderful professors at Grinnell that took interest in me. Ed Foster, Chuck Cleaver, Bernard Mergen, Bob Haveman, Joe Wall, Al Jones, Ray Horton, Gene King, and more. They provided opportunities or lessons that I have been able to build on in my graduate studies and career. And for them and so many more, I am forever grateful. Frances Gray's early career as a kindergarten teacher instilled in her a patience and kindness that became hallmarks of her work as a pediatrician. Serving as a doctor in an Indianapolis urban clinic for 33 years, Frances provided care to immigrant, refugee, and native Hoosier families facing language, cultural, and financial barriers. She also participated in a national project to coordinate community services to improve care of abused children. Frances regularly mentors girls who are interested in medicine as a career. Greetings to the class of 1971 and greetings to the entire Grinnell community. Thank you so much for this award. I'm honored and humbled to receive this recognition. I want to thank everyone who was responsible for making this happen. My good friends, Mary and Mark Ashcraft, and my friend for life and college roommate, Mary Fleming Kowalski, I know we're all involved. I also want to thank my family, my husband, Warren, my son, Wesley, his wife, Carolyn, and their adorable identical twin sons, Cameron and Jarrett, my two brothers and their family, and of course, my mom and dad. They were all part of my supportive community. Grinnell is a great place. Even our years there were challenging and it was there that I learned to be a lifelong learner. Grinnell allowed me to spread my academic wings and at graduation, I felt like I could tackle just about anything. My dad was a United Methodist minister and my mom was an educator. They were both great sources of, of inspiration for me and for my brothers. In fact, one of my brothers, John, is also a Grinnell graduate. So thank you so much, Grinnell. Thank you for your academic nurturing. Thank you for your social justice traditions. Who knew a small college in Iowa could have such a lifelong impact? To the other awardees, I want to send giant congratulations to you all, especially to Sheena Brown Thomas, who's also representing the class of 1971. Thank you all so much. As an artist and a community organizer, Sheena Brown Thomas is known for her devotion and tenacity. A goldsmith who co-owned Elements Limited in Des Moines for 25 years, Sheena has made well over 100 individual medals for Grinnell College students, faculty honored with endowed chairs, and winners of the Grinnell Prize. She has also led numerous civic and social justice initiatives, including helping to organize nonpartisan get out the vote walks in low turnout areas of Des Moines, and collecting food and supplies for houseless immigrants in Cedar Rapids following the 2020 derecho. Thank you to the Alumni Council for this award. Grinnell has always meant a lot to me over my lifetime, not only because of my campus experiences, great professors, and lifelong friendships, but also because of my marriage to Frank Thomas, 71, and our two sons who also chose to attend Grinnell College, much to our surprise. Grinnell College was where I, as an Iowa small town girl, <clears throat> met a national and global community, rich with different ethnicities, religions, and points of view and where I could engage with the faculty and administration, as well as students at all class levels. I love to encourage high school students to apply to Grinnell and enjoy participating in Grinnell alumni events. I put my heart into making the Grinnell medallions so that they stand up to scrutiny as shining symbols of the recipient's outstanding achievements. It makes me feel good to connect with these exemplary students with professors commemorated as faculty chairs and with the highly honored Social Justice Prize winners. I have always felt a, a compulsion to make a difference in whatever world I was occupying. Following my parents' example, while I was there, I soaked up the atmosphere for social change. 
Grinnell was a hotbed of sexual, political, feminist, and pacifist revolution from 67 to 71. It was a heady experience. I was proud to be a part of it, and it stayed with me. Some of the people who influenced me while I was there were Debbie, Debbie Friedman and Molly Malcolm, class of 68, both feminist rebels with a cause in our Cleveland dorm. Hubert Farbs, class of 69, and Frank, both instrumental in gently handling the fragile aftermath of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King in 68. Mary Bruner and Piero Godota were probably my most influential classmates, Mary for her activism and Pearl for her generous spirit. As for professors, Jim Cassane made me believe in myself when I was very low as a freshman. Charlie Cleaver allowed a very creative way of doing a paper. Fred Weirich introduced me to seeing the world of ancient civilizations through their eyes, and Glenn Zirkel pushed me to the limits to get my craftsmanship just right. It was the basis for all my future work. I thank all these people, and currently I thank Janelle Veet, Vicki Knowlton, Jane Cheney, all of whom work with me on the various medallions for the college. Through his tireless work as an attorney and writing policy legislation, Joel Shapiro is at the forefront of addressing human trafficking in the U.S. At his law firm in Portland, he specializes in advocating for survivors of domestic sex trafficking, as well as consumer protection cases. While earlier working for an Oregon senator, he helped craft national anti-trafficking legislation. Joel is also the co-founder and executive director of the Trafficking Law Center, which provides pro bono legal services to Oregon trafficking victims and survivors, trains attorneys, and raises awareness and educates policymakers and the public. Hello, Grinnell classmates and friends. It's nice to be talking with you, but I have mixed feelings. I wish that we could all be on campus in person to do this, uh, rather than me sitting here in my white void, talking to you through our respective screens. Um, but I am happy to have this opportunity and I am of course honored to receive an alumni award, but I'm also pretty self-conscious because I know there are so many other Grinnellians who are equally worthy of this recognition. But I guess that's kind of what makes it so special is that I know that Grinnell College is a place that doesn't just talk about values, but actually encourages its students and inspires them to pursue their values. And also finds it important to recognize people that are actually out in the world accomplishing good things. In that regard, there is an abundance of riches and I'm not talking about the endowment, I'm talking about so many Grinnell alumni that have done great work and I'm happy to be recognized as part of the difference that we're making in the world. Um, I do want to thank my classmate, uh, Ali Newman Searles, who nominated me for the Alumni Award. Um, I'd like to thank Wayne Moyer for being such a great mentor when I was on campus. Um, previous grads, Ed Sen and Kirk Robertson that introduced me to Capitol Hill when I was a student. And there are so many other Grinnellians that are still in my life. Um, I feel like I'm uh, giving an award speech at the Oscars right now because uh, there's too many people to thank and I wish I could thank them all, but you know who you are and uh, hope to see you in person sometime soon. Thank you. Julia Wolfkuhl has worked for more than 20 years to improve therapies for cancer at the National Institutes of Health and now as a research professor at George Mason University. She's known for finding innovative methods to address breast cancer in a way that is personalized to each patient it requires a bit of detective work looking for what protein markers will indicate a successful treatment with a particular drug. A frequent mentor, Julia helped establish the Aspiring Scientist Summer Internship Program for high school scientists, including underrepresented minority groups. Hi, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for this terrific and unexpected honor. The choice to attend Grinnell back in 1985 for me remains one of the best decisions I've ever made. The education, the research opportunities, and mentorship that I received while a student at the college um, have served me so very well along the path towards uh, the career that I now have today. Um, 
I'm reminded of all of these skills and experiences that I had um, in my Grinnell years when I sit down to a new writing project for work or when I have the opportunity to mentor a young high school student uh, for a research project in the laboratory. Of course, I also have many fun memories of Grinnell, um, spending time with friends, going to happy hour at the bar, watching movies in ARH, playing cards on the weekends, um, and of course, uh, who can forget Peg's Pizza and Star Trek on Sunday nights in Langen Hall. Um, those are all really great memories that still bring a smile to my face uh, after 30 years. Um, I would really like to sincerely thank my um, friends and family and mentors, both past and present, who wrote letters of support for this award. Um, I must specifically thank my dear friend and classmate, Laura Gregory. Um, we've known each other since we were in junior high. Um, I learned about Grinnell from her as a high school student, and uh, she is the one who is uh, responsible for setting this nomination in motion. So my sincerest thanks uh, to all of you. With a remarkable ability to listen to the concerns of all sides of complex issues, David White has thrived in his role as National Executive Director and Chief Negotiator of the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. As a labor and entertainment attorney, he's promoted inclusiveness and the protection of worker rights. David also is a director for the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco and a Grinnell College Life Trustee. He chaired the Board of Trustees from 2007 to 2011. I'm so grateful to receive this Alumni Award. And really, I'm so grateful for everything about my experience at Grinnell College. I arrived there in a place that my mother referred to as Camelot in a cornfield. It was fantastic. Here we were in this island of prairiness with people from over 60 countries around the world. So you get this incredible Midwestern experience. You get this great international experience. The professors who gave so much to me, the legendary Al Jones, Wayne Moyer, Keisho Scott, so many people gave so much. Don Smith, President George Drake, uh, people who I am still in contact from time to time with. I just have such love and affection and appreciation for the gifts that they gave just when they were engaging with you and the personal care that they had for us. My football coaches, Greg Wallace, Andy Hamilton, so many people who gave so much. Those were key to my development and my ability to be involved in something like a sport at a collegiate level and still have time to teach preschool and to work with concerned Black students and all the other things that I and all the other students were doing at Grinnell College. That's incredible. It is a place where intellectualism and inquiry thrives. It is a place where we are taught to fight the world's fight. And that is unique and so incredibly needed in this world. And Grinnell College did that then and it does that now. So my connection to Grinnell, my ability to have been able to give back a little bit after I graduated, all of that to me is reflected in my gratitude for this alumni award.
I still have very close friends, as all of us do, from Grinnell. Um, it's always going to be a part of who I am. It's embedded deep within my DNA. I'm really grateful for the award and grateful to be here virtually with everyone who might be watching this, some of whom I'm sure I'll be talking to and hopefully seeing soon as we come out into the world post-pandemic. Thank you very much. Jacob Willig Anwachi gives his time generously and is known for his diplomacy, mentorship, and devotion to the Grinnell community. As an associate professor of physics at Grinnell for a dozen years, Jacob conducted collaborative research with undergraduate students in magnetic resonance imaging and medical physics. With a long-standing commitment to diversity, Jacob has been involved in numerous campus and community organizations, often leading by example. He is now a clinical professor of physics at Boston University. Hello, Grinnell. Thank you for this amazing recognition. Grinnell changed my life and the lives of so many people I love, including many family members and now my daughter. So I feel lucky to be able to give back to the Grinnell community and I'm humbled to receive this award. I'm grateful to Grinnell for all the usual things, but when I reflect on what matters most to me about Grinnell, it's the community. It's the people that Grinnell put into my life and the shared sense of dedication to each other and to Grinnell's mission that I'm most grateful for. First and foremost, I was lucky to meet my wife at Grinnell. Thank you, Angela, for being such an amazing force for good in the world and in my life. I'm also so grateful to the people who taught and mentored me as a student. Two in particular that I need to mention are my advisor, Mike Schneider, who gave me my first research opportunity and wrote me countless letters of recommendation, and Keisha Scott, who welcomed Angela and I into her family and has been a mentor to both of us. Thanks also to my friends and classmates who challenged me and who made everyday life better, especially the Ross and Gates crew. I consider myself particularly lucky to have returned to Grinnell as a faculty member. I think I learned more during my second stint at Grinnell than my first. I was challenged and inspired by working with such amazing colleagues on the faculty and staff who showed passion, integrity, and leadership in doing their jobs every single day. I want to thank the physics department in particular, especially my senior colleagues for uh, guiding me and showing me support. I was also lucky to have friends and mentors from departments and, and offices across campus. There are far too many to name, but you know who you are. Thank you. I want to say a special thank you to all my students over the years. You are really what made working in Grinnell such an amazing job. Finally, I want to thank my parents, lifelong educators who are now part of the larger Grinnell community for instilling in me a love of learning and a calling to help others. Congratulations to the other awardees. And thank you again to the Alumni Association for this humbling recognition. With profound empathy for those who participate in her research, Sally Campbell Gallman is a scholar and activist. As a professor of child and family studies at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, Sally is committed to improving the lives of children and their caregivers. She combines art and social science to capture a more nuanced understanding of children's diverse gendered lives across school, home, family, and community context, and uses visual research as a vehicle for outreach and advocacy. Sally also is the principal investigator of the Gender Moxie Project, a research group studying gender diversity in childhood. So thank everyone for this beautiful, beautiful recognition. Um, Grinnell is so special and to have earned the high opinions of my classmates uh, in particular is um, the greatest award I could possibly receive. I mean, I've gotten all kinds of fancy things in my life, but nothing is as important as to be recognized um, by your own. So I'm particularly thrilled um, and honored uh, to have received this award. Um, Grinnell uh, is very special. I arrived there sight unseen at 17 years old off a plane from Honolulu. I had no idea. I don't think I even owned socks. Like I came in flip flops like all the island girls. And I stayed, I stayed summers. I stayed in Grinnell rather than going back to my house on the beach. Um, you know, it was such a special place. And it was at Grinnell that I found, you know, my people and also my purpose. Um, I was never told about what it was to live a life of service. I was never told that 
you know, you could have a life all your own. And most importantly, it was the first place that I was told I had something to offer and that I was someone who got to be a knower and got to be a giver and had something to contribute. Um, and so for, you know, the what I experienced at Grinnell, what I learned there both academically and socially um, is something that I still draw on every single day in my work as an artist, as a researcher, as a university professor, as a human being and a mother. Um, and, and that's, that it's been it's been everything to me and i'm hoping that one or maybe all of my three children will go to grinnell because that would be truly uh, wonderful i'm selling it pretty hard um uh, grinnell is a really special place and it does good in the world it's more than just a great college education um it's a transformative force uh for finding the good seeking good and amplifying the good um in the world around us even at times um like this it is a beacon and a lighthouse for so many including myself um, in terms of thank yous, I'd like to thank my Grinnell professors, especially the late John Mullen, um, who taught me to find the arias amidst the humdrum every day. Um, I'd like to thank my classmates, of course, and the alumni committee. I would like to thank my parents and my husband, David, class of 93, and my three children, Joanna, Elizabeth, and Ben, um, for whom I do this work. Thank you to everyone. Um, I just wish that we were all together <laughs> so we could, you know, run around and laugh and scream and hug and do all those things. So thank you very much. This is uh, the honor of a lifetime. Sabrina Egan has made remarkable contributions to the field of public health through her work on HIV and tuberculosis projects across the globe. Her 18 years as a public health nurse has taken her to 15 countries where she has helped develop health networks and provide technical support. As a senior technical advisor at the JSI Research and Training Institute, Sabrina works with teams to improve performance on service delivery and management of patients. A champion for equity and access, Sabrina embodies the Grinnell ideal of scholarship and service. I wanna thank Grinnell for this award today. I find myself in great company with the other awardees who represent an interesting spectrum of skills and creativity and compassion. I always love seeing what other Grinnellians are doing. Beyond this award, I wanna thank Grinnell for what it taught me nearly 30 years ago about how to discover what it is that I wanna do, where I felt an interest and also where I felt I could make a difference. Grinnell with its lively community of curious people who wanna make the world better gave me the scaffolding to seek out people and teams that were interested in what I was interested in and to be an effective member of those teams. Being a good team member is essential to the work that I do in public health. I'm lucky to work every day with dedicated individuals who are doing their best to improve the health of people in their countries, in clinics, and in the communities in which we live. These colleagues have an immense sense of purpose, of possibility, and of responsibility. As with Grinnell, the public health environments I find myself in are ones of action and learning combined with a sense of collaboration and the pleasure that people have when they're excited about ideas and possibilities and when they work with other people who are similarly excited. The work is sometimes difficult, but it's never boring and it's often incredibly satisfying. I wanna thank my family, my parents and my sisters and my nieces and nephews who are now a source of joy and inspiration. I want to thank my friends, including a great group of friends from Grinnell, some of whom I'm still close to today, and a couple of whom who've been critical in turns that I've taken in my career along the way. I want to thank my husband, John, who's a wonderful person. And Grinnell, I'm grateful for this award, and I'm mostly grateful for the tools that I received 30 years ago to shape my career and to be part of satisfying work. Thank you. As a minister, affordable housing advocate, an extensive community volunteer, Jake Miles Joseph is creating change through an equity lens. A minister at First Congregational Church of Guilford, Connecticut, Jake is a specialist in leadership, fundraising, teaching, and community organizing. He has helped write a national framework for inclusion within the housing authority world, advocated for Habitat for Humanity initiatives, and helped plan one of the largest LGBTQ conferences in the world. His wide-ranging Grinnell volunteerism includes serving as co-chair of Grinnell on the Front Range and co-founding the Grinnell and Southern New England Regional Network. Thank you so much for the honor of being named as the Pioneer Award winner for this year. I know we're coming together virtually, but to me that's sort of part of my life these days and has been now for 
well over a year here as the minister at First Church Guilford. Uh, I think of this more as a, a workshop for social justice and community organizing. Um, being a minister wasn't something I expected going into Grinnell, and it was to being mentored by Deanna Shorb and the community organizing initiatives in Grinnell and elsewhere um, that I was nurtured into this career path. Um, this church is one of the ones that was part of helping send the ministers to Iowa to found a college to um, stand for abolitionism and social justice. Um, kind of feels full circle that I'm now here serving this historic congregation, working on many fronts of social justice, racial justice, economic justice, and helping support um, those coming out of prison settings who um, need help with re-entry into community. Um, there's so many facets of what I do that I attribute back to Grinnell, um, my learnings on campus, the mentoring that I received, and the opportunities. Thank you for this great honor. Um, I promise uh, to continue in my life to do the best I can um, to live up to it. It's a huge honor to be a Grinnellian um, and to be called to work that is society changing um, here in Guilford and wherever life takes me from here. Hope you're all doing well and um, having a good reunion. Mateo Smesvin identified cultural factors that held back East Africans from taking advantage of educational opportunities. Then he went to work on fixing the problems. He founded the Institute for East African Councils on Higher Education in Washington, D.C., which has opened doors to higher education for immigrants and first-generation immigrant students of East African heritage. The Institute tailors scholars' high school curriculum and helps them complete college applications and interview effectively. Formerly an immigration and border affairs reporter for the San Antonio Express News, Sylvia Foster Frau brought attention to important issues while maintaining a humanitarian lens that is deeply aligned with the values of Grinnell College. During the 2017 Sutherland Springs Church mass shooting, Sylvia broke national stories and wrote heartfelt long-form articles. Her extensive reporting on immigration has led her to become a sought-after expert and earned her respect from her peers. In February 2021, she joined the Washington Post as a multiculturalism reporter. Thank you so much. I am just so honored and grateful to Grinnell College. It really, my experience there was such a pivotal part of my life and really shaped who I am today and any kind of a career trajectory or accomplishments I had along the way. So I just feel very indebted to the teachers and the students and staff who helped shape my college experience. And even now it feels like I have this special community that I can go to and seek out um, wherever I go or wherever I move of Grinnellians. And that is just something really special to have going forward after I've graduated. So I just really hope that I can give back and pay it forward in the same way that Grinnell has given to me. Thank you so much. One of the things I have learned over the years is that our lives are marathons and not sprints. We can have a propensity to get tangled in the events of today and tomorrow, not realizing that the long-term proposition is truly what matters. Our lives and our relationships are arcs that develop over years and not in moments or months. This truth is especially hard to appreciate during times like this, when we currently experience real loss. My heart goes out to our youngest alumni who lost part of their fourth year experience at Grinnell. In 1970, we missed our graduation too. I don't discount this deep, deep disappointment for the class of 2020 or for my own class of 1970, but I will tell you that your relationship with Grinnell can become part of a greater framework. The loss of this moment the distance of this year have both highlighted our abilities to adapt and reconnect, to learn from remote locations, to help others in need. In the future, when you could look back on this year from a distance, I think you will realize that the present challenges have helped to shape you in positive ways. Grinnell launched me on the trajectory of my life. It allowed me to realize my place in the world a place I hope is worthy of the company of all of you. I volunteer with Grinnell to enable others to have that same experience. Watching alumni launch into incredible life journeys 
and achieve significant impact is something with which I am so proud to be associated. I want to thank you for continuing to inspire me and all those around you. Congratulations to our award winners, and thank you to everyone who helped make tonight's program a success. I now invite all of you to participate in the other events and parts of Virtual Reunion this year. Please visit the Reunion website for more information and for our Golden and 50th Reunion classes, including my own class of 1970. Save the dates of October 21 to 24 for a Reunion weekend on campus. It is now my pleasure to introduce Director John Romerheim and the Grinnell College Singers. It seems we are living in a moment when there are many powerful forces that are pulling us apart. And in response, so many of us yearn to counteract those forces and find ways to gather us together. To celebrate your reunion, the Grinnell Singers have chosen to sing a piece that encourages each of us to reach out to one another and to recognize, as Amanda Gorman said in her powerful inauguration poem, there was always light if only we are brave enough to see it if only we're brave enough to be it. To Sit and Dream was composed by Rosephany Powell, and it is based on a text by Langston Hughes in which the poet takes a moment to dream about a better world. And he says, quote, all you who are dreamers too, help me make our world anew. It is performed by 23 of our choir members, a group that is fortunate to have had the opportunity to rehearse together in person during the spring term. We hope you enjoy it.
see. 